She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Um, today is a day that we're going to focus on the issues of your spiritual life and mine, because um, <laughs> I need it just as bad as anybody else does, uh, even if you don't realize that you need it. And it doesn't matter which, you know, God you serve, um, meaning y- as far as the show goes, you know, um, this is about uh, you growing spiritually. So whatever um, denomination, or even if you're an atheist, um, even atheist is a form of, of a religion itself. And so the principles that we're going to talk about here today are going to apply to whatever it is that your uh, spiritual beliefs are. There's some really powerful wisdom that we're going to be sharing today um, that if you have found yourself just this morning um, in a place where, you know, that... you're just having a hard time trusting some people and or you're feeling a bit discouraged and feeling like, um, I don't know, that just courage has left you and and that maybe you just came out of like the happiest part of your life and now you're just like, man, nothing seems to be working um, and or you're just frustrated. I have found myself there before uh, many times in my life. In fact, I remember reflecting just even as of yesterday, uh, reflecting on something from 21 years ago. 22 years ago, actually, when I was totally suicidal and uh, just wanting to end it all uh, because I had just, again, lost all courage. Uh, I had not had any encouragement um, for a really long time and just everything was falling apart all around me and it just felt bad. Like every everything just felt bad. Man, this is 23 years ago. This is 1995. Um gross. Anyway, so it's 1995. So so the the point is, is that um, today's message is, is going to speak directly into that. So if you are discouraged, if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you are feeling like you've worked really, really hard in some areas and man, you're just not seeing the, the benefit of it and or you're kind of you're, you're in that state right now where everything seems to be super hard. And and uh, when you look ahead, that's all you can see. I had two very distinct parts of my life and even in in a more recent part of my life. So I'll say like three points in my life, actually four just came to mind um, that uh, I felt that way. I just, I just felt like it's always going to be bad. You know, when I was homeless 27 years ago, I just felt like it was always going to be bad. This is this is how my life was always going to end up. This is always how it was going to turn up, that the people in my life would always end up being like the ones that are in my life now. So even if I went and met new friends and, you know, even though my, my husband had taken off and my bank account had $2.03 to it and I had a $35,000 debt, just everything felt bad. And I literally like I, I replicated my future Bam, you know, imagine like you're photocopying your future to be exactly what your current state is in. And that's where I found myself um, 27 years ago, again, in, in 1995, where... <sighs> You you just want to quit. You just want to stop. You just want to be done with it. You just you just want it to be over. And and, um, you have no life left in your eyes. Uh, You have no energy coming out of your body. You have no inspiration coming on you. You just feel zapped. You just feel like crap. You just feel like it's always going to be that way. Um, I also remember with my kids, um, I remember a certain season, especially my three sons, you know, that just, they're three boys. Imagine they're all close in age and like, wow, you know, I just felt like, gosh, you know, you just get so saddened and you get so disappointed because everything that you've been teaching them for some reason, they're just not getting it in that moment. And the thing that I was teaching them was how to honor each other, to love each other, to encourage each other, to forgive each other, um, to have grace with each other. Um, and, and to learn people skills, like to use good people skills with each other. And this is when they were really little. And I just remember going back into my bed and covering my eyes and wanting to cry. And I have felt that way working with employees also from time to time. It's like, why? In fact, I had felt like, wow, like, why is it that sometimes employees are acting like my three sons? You know what I mean? Like these three little boys, like then these are adults. They're acting the same way as, as my kids, you know, and you just... 
I don't know, you just feel so discouraged. You feel like it's just never going to get easier. And so today's message is for you. It is for you. And by the way, and if you enjoy today's message, there are many more of these messages from a spiritual bend. At least once a week, we bring brand new, fresh spiritual content to the table for you um, so that you can take a drink and get refreshed and kind of get refocused and have some inspiration and encouragement washing over you. Because I'm telling you, we're getting beat up out there in the real world of life and and we need to be refilled. We clearly need to be refilled. So I hope this does not offend you. If it does, you can just hang up right now. We're going to be reading from the best success book ever written from the richest man, actually, one particular place, the book of Mishle, which is Proverbs in English, um, because this book was written in Hebrew. Um, The best success book ever written, in my opinion, is the Bible. It is where I've drawn wealth secrets. It is where I've drawn getting out of debt, uh, growing businesses, growing in leadership, raising kids, marriage, handling problems, health issues. All of those answers are right inside this book. Everything that every human would ever need is inside of this powerful book. Unfortunately, religions have tainted the book and told you what it says versus letting you read it for yourself. I say read it for yourself and let the words go inside of you. So that's what I'm going to be reading from. I would grab yours if if you're sitting there watching this, um, you know, Grab yours. Um, I'm reading from this particular version from the Institute for Scripture Research. It's called Scriptures. It is my favorite version. It keeps all the Hebrew words intact versus changing the Hebrew words to English words, uh, meaning names. Um, so names of places, all the pronouns are are in their original Hebrew language, and uh, which kind of connects you to that culture versus thinking this book was written in England um, or in America because it wasn't. It comes from a totally different culture. So I'm going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 3, which again in Hebrew is Mishle, pretty pretty word, right? Um, uh, And that's going to be chapter 3. It actually has one of my life, life scriptures in it um, that helped to dig me out of a deep depression that I was in for many, many years. So, but first I'm going to pray and if you're, if you're okay with that. So Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with my friend here. Thank you for the chance to be able to, um, share with them, uh, with each other, the words that you wrote and uh, that you inspired into King Solomon. And um, I thank you that these words have been life-giving to me for 25 plus years. And I pray that these words are life-giving to me again today as they were yesterday and that they are life-giving to my friend who is listening. So bless our time together. Let your Holy Spirit be the one that speaks. Let my words fall to the ground and die. Let your words be the one that prevail. Get, Get through through our thick skulls and our hardened hearts, penetrate through our, the blindness of our eyes and let us see you, let us hear you, let us interpret you and gain understanding from you that we would move our life ahead and be all that you have called us to be, that we'd be worthy of the calling in which you have called us to uh, versus trying to be worthy of somebody else's calling, uh, but that we would um, find deep satisfaction in what we do and that you would be our guide, you'd be our leader, you'd be the one who Um, that moves us in the directions of where you want us to go and that all confusion, all confusion would be uh, gone and that clarity of mind would come as a direct result of this time that we have together. I ask these things in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, that is Jesus, my Messiah. Amen. Okay, so so let's let's get into it. So it's chapter three. Um, this is really powerful. Um, and and I uh, about a year ago when I read this again because I read it cover to cover the whole thing um, pretty much once a year. Sometimes I do do it twice a year, but generally once a year. And it says this, um, it says, my son, do not forget my Torah, which Torah um, is teaching. Um, it's, it's, it's the word Torah in Hebrew means teaching. Um, and in some places, some people interpret it to be law, but don't, don't, don't. He says, don't forget my teaching. Okay. The Torah is the books, the five books that, that Moses wrote. Um, and that is called the Torah. The Jews have still keep that Torah today. And many uh, 
believers in the Christian Catholic faith also, and that's in the front part of the Bible. Um, but this man's Torah is the same as the Torah that Moses wrote. It's all based on the same exact thing. And who was he talking about? Because this is King Solomon, the richest man that ever walked the earth. They've calculated his riches into today's riches, and there's nobody still to this day that even comes close. There's not a trillionaire whose wealth comes close to what Solomon's wealth was. Um, and so he, who was he taught by? He was taught by his father, King David. Um, so imagine these are two, you know, the president of a nation, right? So we have a president of a nation that son then was the successor. And now the son is the president of the nation. At this time, the most powerful nation in the world uh, was Israel. Um, and where other kings were coming to hear this very wise man, um, again, this president of a nation or prime minister of a nation. I want you to get the picture. That's who this Solomon was. Solomon was the name Shalomo in, in Hebrew. Um, he, he was the most powerful. He was the most influential man in the world. He was the wealthiest man in the world. People came to just hear him talk. They came to hear his sayings, which is what Proverbs are. They hear to hear the wisdom that dripped from his mouth. Do you know anybody that's really wise? Um, do you have anybody in your life that's like really wise? Um, I want you to multiply because there's nobody on earth that has carried the kind of wisdom that this man did. And he asked God for that wisdom and he got it. He didn't ask for riches, but he got wisdom and that wisdom he also then was blessed with riches. Um, so here we go. So he says, my son. So again, this is like, we're, we're like, we're like, you know, getting a glimpse of a message into, you know, a father and a son relationship. It's like, well, we found someone's diary. We found a personal letter written to from, from the most famous king, the most famous leader. And here, bam, you know, we're being able to, you know, we're like hiding behind the, the desk reading, reading this note. So it says, my son, do not forget my Torah, which again, don't forget my teachings, and let your heart watch over my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they add to you. Let not loving commitment and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Thus, finding favor and good insight in the eyes of Elohim, which is God in Hebrew, and man. Let's just stop right there, okay? I want you to think about this. He's saying, take the Torah, take these teachings, and I want you to bind them around your neck. I want you to write them on the tablet of your heart. Thus, finding favor and good insight with God and man. So he's saying, if you if you take these teachings I have given you, and you need to what? He says, bind them around your neck. Bind them to your heart. Hold these things close to you. Why? Friend, because wealth and recognition and the busyness of our business and work life, the busyness of children, the busyness of, of this world system that we live in can be so distracting that we end up submitting ourselves to the, the wisdom of society, which is not wise at all. We end up submitting it to social media, which has no wisdom at all. We end up following people into destruction. We're going to continue here in just a minute. Do you have a closet full of clothes yet say, I have nothing to wear? Are you a mom doing her best but desperately lacking me time? Or maybe your schedule has you dressing practically instead of powerfully. What if I told you there's a system, a blueprint that can save you time, money, and turn every head in the room, as well as impact the world through fashion? Friend, you're in the fashion business whether you like it or not. You're an ambassador representing your faith, your marriage, family, and business. Style is just a skill. A skill made easy with 123 Style Me. 10 steps to style success that will expand your leadership, save you hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars. This program will bring you peace of mind, reignite your marriage, make you more productive, respected, and instantly boost your confidence, equipping you to be bold and beautiful. Go to courses.lindapage.com. Again, that is courses.linda, L-I-N-D-A, P-A-I-G-E.com and make a priceless investment in yourself.
Are you confident that you're always getting a good deal? Have you been equipped with the negotiation confidence strategies, tactics, and supporting tools you need to close world-class deals? Finally, JPA is making the exact same specialized negotiation training and secrets used by the world's largest, most successful corporations available to everyone. Proven in more than 60 countries and used by brands like Adidas, Vodafone, Pfizer, Nokia, and others, the JPA negotiation method will set you up to save money and time while significantly increasing your profits. It doesn't matter if you're buying or selling real estate, closing contracts with suppliers, or selling products and services to individuals or organization. Using their simple step-by-step -step negotiation preparation checklist, you'll be ready to confidently slug it out toe-to-toe -to -toe with the toughest professional negotiators. It's time for you to stop leaving money and opportunity on the table. Go to bizneg.com forward slash events to register now. Again, that's B-I-Z-N-E eg.com forward slash events. Get registered today. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what poverty-stricken families are dealing with in Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic needs of food, clean water, and safe housing. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming Nicaragua. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Nicaragua. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. Did you know you can take The Danny Johnson Show with you wherever you go? It's never been easier to stay up to date with the latest content from Danny with the dannyjohnson.com app. Watch or listen in the car, at the gym, or on the go. Download it now from the App Store and Google Play and never miss a show again. Your family, business, and bank account will thank you. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. We are so distracted in this world, and some of the distraction is leading us to discouragement. It's leading us to places of hopelessness. And we have submitted to so many different people and so much different messaging from Fox or CNN to social media, to the celebrities, to various different preachers, to various different uh, writers. We have given our heart and our mind to so many different places that oftentimes we end up more confused than when we started. We don't know up from down. We don't know right from left. We don't know right from wrong. We just end up in a state of confusion, which is why this particular book, the best success book ever written, is something that I have to cling to every single day. And just like it says right here in Proverbs 3, where he says, my son, do not forget my Torah, which is my teachings, and let your heart watch over my command for length of days and long life and peace they add to you. Let not loving commitment and truth forsake you. Hold on to truth. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Thus finding favor and good insight in the eyes of Elohim and man, in the eyes of God and man. If we keep going to, to chapter, I mean, uh, to verse 5. Again, this is Proverbs 3. I just read verses 1 through 4. Now to 5. Trust in Yahweh. That's the Hebrew name. That's God's name in Hebrew. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Know him in all your ways and he makes all your paths straight. So again, here is the richest man, richest, most famous, most powerful leader of a nation, writing a personal letter to his son giving him instruction. I mean, have you ever like wished that you had a really wise father and a super successful mother or father that you could like trust was going to give you really good advice, right? I mean, some people do, 
Most of us don't, right? So, but here it's like we're being able to see into this personal relationship and the kind of advice that this very powerful person is giving their next, their, their the next generation. And so we see he's like, bind truth to your heart around your neck so that you will find favor with God and with man. What truth are you clinging to? I remember when I first read verse 5, trust in Yahweh with all your heart. I took apart every single one of these words. I took the word trust and I and I went through and I, I defined it, right? So I looked in the dictionary and I looked at all the different um, definitions for the word trust to really like chew on this word trust. And at the time, I had been stolen from. At the time, I I did not trust people. I had not been stolen from once, but twice. At the time, I didn't even trust God. And here this said trust. And when I looked up trust, it means to cleave to, to, to hold on to, to, to like, uh, like hold on to for dear life. You know what I mean? Like you just, you, you, it's almost like you surrender, like you give up, you, you're, tr- you're putting your trust in. So you're, you're just saying, okay, I'm just, I'm just totally surrendering. I'm just going to let myself fall into this. And I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to trust whatever the outcome is. I'm just going to, I'm not going to try to control anything. I'm just going to release and I'm going to trust. And this says, trust in Yahweh. Trust in Yahweh. What does that mean? That when we fully trust in Yahweh, we do not worry about money. When we fully trust in him and we've we've given all of our trust over to him, then we don't worry about who's going to cheat us. We don't worry who's going to screw us over. We don't worry about the person who is slandering our name. We don't worry about who is slandering even our company. We don't worry about who's talking behind our back. We don't worry about our health even. That doesn't mean that you don't live wise and not take care of yourself. No, you do take care of yourself and you fully trust that he's the one that knows how many days you have left here on the planet. He's also the one who has all the money right there in his hands. He's also the one that has all the connections right there in his hands. That he's the one that is the controller of the universe and not you and not me. So when it comes to the word trust and trust in him, you kind of have to know him and know his character in order to understand the power of those three words, trust in Yahweh versus trust in your money, trust in your ability, trust in the strength of the people around you. No, trust in him and he will direct your path. We'll continue here in just one minute. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. My name is Anders and I'm from Latvia. Prior to plugging into dannyjohnson.com, I was a struggling English teacher back home. I had a language school that I started when I was 21 and uh, had grown it uh, to be pretty okay in my city. But at the same time, I had acquired a debt of $60,000. In a matter of eight to nine months, I got rid of my debt. And by 2011, we had our first million dollar year. This has been amazing. We grew our school from about 100 students to 2,000 students and I can only highly recommend for you to come to the next event and be part of this community and learn the tools that will help you to succeed. Prior to plugging into dannyjohnson.com, my family and I were hemorrhaging under the pressures of debt. Since attending First Steps to Success in January of 2014, my family and I have paid off over $147,000 in 19 months. We're completely consumer debt free. We have restored relationships and our business is growing at a rate of 15% at every event. Your 
next step is to sign up for the next First Steps to Success and start creating your own story. My name is Jeff Conyers and prior to First Steps to Success, I was a struggling business owner. I had discovered that my business account went negative 5,000 and uh, I, feel, I realized that I did not have a business plan and I needed to do something. Fast forward to one year after, I have now created, um, just by implementing the tools at First Steps to Success, uh, over $50,000, created another business, improved my personal and business relationships. Man, it's like the story is forever changing and just it just gets better and better. I don't know about you or what you're going through, but I would highly recommend getting to First Steps to Success. Prior to plugging into First Steps to Success, we were drowning under a mountain of debt. We we're heading to divorce court. We had failing businesses and toxic relationships. Since plugging into First Steps to Success, our marriage has been restored. We have paid off over $56,000 in 11 months. We've helped our community pay off over $300,000 in 14 months. My business has grown in over 600% in four months. And for the first time, I could say I'm just loving life. I have great relationships. So if you are fine where you are, then this event is not for you. But if you're ready to reach your goal and to change your life, then I highly recommend that you get registered for the next event. Hi, my name is Jill Kearns. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Prior to coming to First Steps to Success, uh, my husband and I were struggling financially and were uh, hurting um, in our relationship a lot. Uh, we needed um, more time together and we just were struggling with that because of the finances. And so uh, since plugging in, we've actually paid off over $280,000 in debt. We are completely debt free and more than anything else, the look on my husband's face of relief and um, and excitement about where our future lies and the traveling and the fun, enjoyable times that we'll get to spend together as a family is totally worth it. So if you want to have better relationships with your significant other, your children, if you have a desire to um, to be completely debt free and released from that bondage for whatever reason, uh, whatever the burdens are, your next step is to get to First Steps to Success right now. So prior to getting started to DannyJohnson.com, I was a college dropout. I was working a, a bottom of the barrel type job. I started plugging into her training. Um, I've skyrocketed through the ranks of corporate America. I've tripled my income in the last five years. Uh, that's all fine and Danny, but it wasn't, uh, there's a part of me that had the part missing. So um, I ended up using Danny's prospecting skills and I ended up meeting the level what multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. So who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your personality? Are you trusting in your own strength? Are you trusting in your own ability? Are you trusting in what your parents trusted in? Are you trusting in your political party? Are you trusting in your religion? Are you trusting in your pastor? Are you trusting in where have you, what have you put your trust in? Are you putting it in your business? Are you putting it in your finances? Are you putting it in the economy? Are you putting in a new tax bill? What are you putting your trust in? Because right here in Proverbs 3, 5, it's very clear where our trust is supposed to be in. And when we put our trust in anything other than him, we are led astray we are brought to confusion, and in confusion, we get totally discouraged. Discouragement is a part of, of every day of a confused person. Confusion pulls the life out of us. It creates a hardened heart. It, it brings in hopelessness, and when we have hopelessness, we cannot see the promise of a better future that is literally not in front of us. We're standing in it. We're literally standing in the promise of a better future. And we cannot see it because our trust has been in people or in a society or in an inanimate object. But right here, written by the richest king who ever lived the earth, the richest leader of a nation, writing a personal letter to his son, perhaps the next one that is going to take his position, he is telling him, these are the best words of advice I can give you. Trust 
in Yahweh. Trust in Yahweh. Why? Because it is He that controls the breath that comes out of our mouths. It is He that knows how many days left we have. It is He who owns everything. And see, when we put our trust in other things, we set ourselves up for failure because those things are going to fall apart. But there's only one that is going to sustain and stay standing when everything's all said and done. Yeah, but Danny, I mean, I can't trust him. Have you ever really tried? Oh, wait a second. If you're saying that you can't, you're like, yeah, I tried once and, and he failed me. Really? Or is it that you trusted in the outcome you wanted instead of trusting in him? You trusted in an outcome. You were trying to control the outcome. Yeah, but somebody died. I understand. I understand exactly how discouraging that is, or even to watch your own child suffer. I've had lots of people I love die. I've prayed for people who died. I've had a child suffer and, and fight for her life at 16 years old. I understand. But what I'm saying is, is that trust means that you don't try to control the outcome, but that you trust that he knows best for all things involved. So when you really trust, it means you don't control. Control is the absence of trust. Trust builds faith. Trust brings courage. Trust is a burden lifter. Trust is a reliever. It's a releaser versus, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix that? How do I shut that person up? What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? That worry, that anxiety, that fret, that discouragement, that, that, that like insane fervor and obsession, there's no trust there. But there's only going to end up destruction that's only going to take you to the place that you're going to learn for yourself that you have no control over anything besides your own heart. That's all you have control over is your own heart. That's it. And out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. So let's keep going. So it says, trust in Yahweh with all your heart. Here's a prayer that I pray daily, like, God, I think I am trusting in you with all my heart, but if there's any part of my whole body that is not trusting in you, please pluck it out. Get rid of it. Squeeze it out of me because I do not want to walk in the error of my own ways. I do not want to walk in the wickedness of my own heart. I want to serve you and walk with you more than anything in life. I want to honor you with my life. So whatever part of me that I cannot see, you reveal it to me and pluck it out. You see, even in the Second Testament, Yeshua's writings, where, or the sayings of Yeshua, where we see in the Gospels, where he said that if your eye sins against you, it's better to pluck it out versus contaminating your whole body. You know, if your arm, uh, you know, does something wrong, it's better to cut it off. Now, obviously, this was not like, this is a metaphor, like get rid of the arm so it does not endanger the rest of your body. And so it's the same way in here. It's like, God, if there's any part of me that is not trusting all of you, you, that it's not trusting you with all of my heart. And why does he want us to trust with all his heart? Because we can't control anything anyway. And because there's peace in trust. Trust comes fully packed with peace. Trust also comes fully packed with faith. Trust also comes fully packed with satisfaction and fulfillment. Trust comes fully packed with joy. That's what's inside of trusting in Yahweh. But what is not inside, when, whenever, when, whenever we put our trust in man or in money or in society or government, there's just nothing but turmoil that's involved in that. So trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. On your own understanding. What does that mean? You're leaning on your own knowledge, your own experience to make decisions. You're leaning on your own, your own past. You're leaning on your past. You're leaning on what you know, what you understand, which friend, come on. I don't care if you're a PhD. How big is your understanding? Think about it. 
Your understanding is frail, like every other human's understanding. You want God's understanding, not your understanding. You want the creator of the heavens and the earth's understanding, not yours. And he's willing to freely give you his understanding if you are willing to trust in him with all your heart. So you have to forsake your understanding in order to gain a greater understanding. That means you have to stop clinging to your past and clinging to your ways of distrusting others. Instead of clinging to your ways, and instead of clinging to your past, and cl- instead of clinging to your experience, which I've done that so many stinking times and makes me mad, you have to forsake that in order to grow in your understanding with Him. Verse 6, know Him in all your ways, all my ways, like know him in all my ways, know him in the shower, know him while you're cooking, know him while you're driving, know him while you're working, know him while you're at the grocery store, know him while you are about to click add to cart and something stupid on the internet, particularly amazon.com. Know him in all your ways. What is that? This word know means to be intimate with somebody. It actually means to be intimate. The same exact word know here is the same exact word that is used as to describe intimacy between a man and a woman, meaning a husband and a wife. That intimacy, almost like a sexual intimacy, literally, like for the two to become one. So in this case, he is saying to his son, you need to know him like you know your wife. You need to know him in all your ways. This is like really powerfully convicting for me right now. Know him. Do you know him in all your ways? Are you walking with him in your work life? Are you knowing him in your financial life? Are you knowing him in your health choices? Do I choose the Coke or do I choose water? Are you knowing him? Are you intimate with him like that? That you have this companion that is with you 24-7, even in your sleep. Do you know him in that way? Yes, no, maybe, friend. You need to know him in that way. You really need to know him in that way. You really need to know him in your financial ways as well. You do. You need to know him in your financial ways. Get your eyes open on what he teaches in the financial realm. There's a couple of books that I wrote that all are geared out of this book, this main book that talks, basically I studied those 2,500 scriptures and narrowed it down to where you and I could chew on it. And there's two, I wanna show them to you. Okay, but one here, I'll give you this one for free. If you go to dannyjohnson.com, because imagine if you knew your father's ways financially, if you knew, because he, hello, he gives us the choice to be wealth, to be wealthy or to be impoverished. That choice is ours. So he gives the instructions on how to do it. The instructions are here in this book and they're here in this one. First Steps to Wealth and Spirit Driven Success. Spirit Driven Success is all about money. This is about work and money. Okay, you can have this one for free if you go to the website dannyjohnson.com and download your free copy right now. Okay, just go download it right now. It's absolutely free. Or if you want the physical copy, you can pay the shipping to get it to your house. I'll still send it to you for free. You can call our office for that one, 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866-760-8255. We'll be right back. We're going to talk more about getting deeper into this uh, message here. Hey, everybody. My name is Digby, and I'm from New South Wales, Australia. And um, I'm here live at First Steps to Success. I've been to six events now, and my journey started with an encore in Brisbane. And after doing two encores in Australia, I just really had to come to a live event, so here I am today. Um, And since um, attending an encore and um, getting involved, my income has doubled and my family life is just blossoming. So you have to get that. You just have to experience it. My name is Mario Johns. Um, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, I just want to share with you, um, on April 14, 2013, that was the first day I heard the name Danny Johnson. And I was so 
inspired by her story, and and I was, I just had to find out, you know, how did she go from homeless to millionaire, and it just it was just so inspiring to me. Um, so I started, I went on DannyJohnson.com, and I started getting the the daily emails, the daily fixes, and uh, and then after a while, I just stopped reading them for some reason, and um, August of 2013, it was. Uh, Four days before my first event, I would, after work I went on YouTube and I typed in Danny Johnson's name came to my mind so I typed it in on YouTube and I sat at my kitchen table for about an hour and just listened to testimonial after testimonial and it was just so inspired. I'm like I have to, I have to get to this, this first steps to success and um, I had no money. Um, I didn't know how I was going to get there. The funny thing was, a week prior to this day, I got a credit card in the mail that I never asked for. It was a $1,200 credit limit. I was gonna cut it up, but I figured I'd save it for like the emergency. I got my event ticket, my flight, and uh, my hotel room. I maxed that sucker out, and I came down uh, to Dallas, Texas. And uh, the first three hours of the first day, I was just like in tears the whole time. I was just so blown away. It was something that I was uh, just so hungry for. And uh, prior to plugging in, um, I was a depressed, hopeless, suicidal drug addict. Um, I hated myself. I hated life. I hated other people. Uh, I felt like a slave to debt. And I actually accepted debt as part of my life. Um, I had toxic relationships. And I was, uh, and then since plugging in, I've been drug free for 15 and a half months now. Um, I, I paid off over $13,000 worth of debt in a little over 13 months. I've uh, completely restored my relationships with my family, my friends. I have amazing friends today from around the world. Um, I love my life, and uh, and this is just an honor to be up on this stage. Um, but uh, if, if I just want to say, if you're if you're new here, um, one thing that I wish I did is um, one of my favorite products is War on Debt, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't been follow, following that as like I should be. If I my first event, if I got War on Debt and follow that with diligence, I, today I'd be debt free. So I just want to encourage you, if you're new here and you have debt, I highly recommend getting that because that's, um, by the end of this year, I want to be debt free and that's my goal. So, um, so, so uh, uh, please help me welcome back to the stage, America's favorite millionaire, Danny Johnson. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. So, are you trusting in him with all of your heart, leaning not on your own understanding, forsaking your own understanding, acknowledging him and knowing him in all your ways? If you are doing that, you are going to succeed. You have no other choice but to succeed if you are doing that. That particular passage has been a compass for my life for 25 plus years. I believe if you dig deep on the meaning of that particular passage, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that it will also be your guide to know him in your finances, to know him in your marriage, to know him in your parenting, to know him in everything you do, every health choice you make, that this companion is with you guiding you every single day. All you have to do is acknowledge him. Acknowledge him and he directs your path. That's what it says. Acknowledge him and he directs your path. You want to succeed. Right now we're going to be taking a few prayer requests. Um, so we're going over to the phones to take those right now. We've got Melissa from Round Rock. Hi, Melissa. Hi. How can I pray for you? Well, I am starting a new job on Monday, and I uh, saw 
the post on Facebook about prayer, prayer requests, and so I thought I would call in and get you to pray for me. That's awesome. So you just heard this message about, about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? I did. I heard part of that, yes. Yeah. yeah, and tell me, um, how does that apply to this circumstance? Well, just knowing that what I'm doing in this new job is, is His will and following His path, you know, and depending on Him to kind of guide me and lead me through it. So is this a job interview or are you starting a new job? No, I'm starting a new job. Starting a new job on Monday. So who opened the door for you? Well, you know, I... I... No, it's a really simple answer. Who opened the door for you? Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was making it a little more complicated. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. He opened the door for you. He opened the door for you. So is there a question of what his will is? No. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I, I don't have any, like, extra favor from him at all. So I'm going to let you pray, and I will just agree with you. So go for it, honey, because your trust is in him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, like, a red-hot phone line that, you know— <laughs> Get straight up to his desk. <laughs> like you have the same, you have the same exact authority. You have the same exact opportunity. He opened a door for you. So what are you going to pray over that job? Go for it. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given me, and um, the door that you opened that I have chosen to follow your path, and I know that this is your will. And I'm not really sure why I'm emotional, but I, I just want to thank you so much. And I feel like in my heart that I'm following your will. And I just pray that you will continue to open doors and have me go down the path that you have planned for me. And, and whatever is coming in my future is your will and that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Why did I get so emotional about that? Uh, because you had the revelation that it was his will. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a good job. He blessed you. Now, you would not have gotten that if I prayed for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, enjoy listening to your shows. That's thank you. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate you. God bless you. You got to let us know how it goes with your new job. I'm so excited for you. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. All right. God bless. Okay. We've got Che from Ohio. Che, how can we pray for you? Hello, Che. Can't hear Che. Che, did you, did you mute yourself? Let me try again. Hi, Che. Can't hear Che. That's lame. Okay, and then we have Francine. Francine from Florida. Hi. Hi. How can we pray for you? Um, for healing from breast cancer and mm -hmm. going through radiation treatment right now. Wow. Do you believe he's a healer? Yes. Yes. Man, today's message like fully fit you, didn't it? I missed it. Mary had me calling. Oh, it's trust in Yahweh, which is his Hebrew name. The Bible is written in Hebrew. The name is Hebrew. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So the key thing is trust in him with all your heart, with all your heart. And don't lean on the understanding of a doctor. Don't lean on the understanding of the reports. Don't lean on the understanding of other people who are talking, talking, talking. But in all your ways. So true. Yeah, right? Because it can get confusing, huh? Yep. It can. All right, baby girl. So I want you to pray. I want you to pray because I don't have any special, like, you know, 
some special something. <laughs> but he says that where two or more are gathered, he is there. And if two or more agree on anything, then he does it. Right? Yep. And you know what well, you're walking through, girlfriend. I wouldn't change it. Amen. I've learned a lot, you know. <laughs> yes. I really have. I've learned so much. And, That's awesome. Um, healed emotionally from some things, That's you awesome. know, that I carried with me for a while that didn't need to be there. Um, now, if it doesn't serve me, I let it go. Amen. Amen. Um, I was in radiation today, and um, it's hard for me because I'm kind of um very natural so it's very hard for me to follow this path yeah. but I just I'm trusting and um I was in radiation today and I was praying and I just said thank you and I trust you and yes. um in the natural world you know um when you see purple light um it's a healing light yeah. and every time I pray when I'm in there I get this purple light Amen. when I close my eyes so your healer's already healing you <laughs> Yep. He's already healing you. Yeah, so, so amen. T- today I asked him, I said, hey, can you send me that purple light? <laughs> <laughs> amen. So I just say yes and amen to healing, healing, healing. And God, you heard her prayers today. You heard her prayers today, and I agree 1,000% and in, in her healing path and the healing that's happening emotionally and physically inside of her, and that she is your chosen daughter, your chosen vessel that will shout from the mountaintops of how you have delivered her from this affliction and that this journey, as she said, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change this journey Um, because you know what? Emotional healing is even so much deeper than physical healing sometimes. Um, So we just pray continuous healing in her mind, her spirit, her emotions, Um, our physical body and our finances in Jesus name. Amen. Man, thank you so much for calling in Francine. Your courage is absolutely phenomenal. We uh, own our own business and we were uh, working like crazy. We have actually three kids and one on the way right now. And uh, for me, I was working like all the time. In fact, for the last 10 years, I've been working probably close to 80 hours a week and uh, no time with the family. Uh, just totally, really, actually, you know, it was it was pretty awful. In fact, we were really struggling uh, with the family dynamic, and uh, the business wasn't growing. Uh, just felt like I was just it just wasn't going to happen. Previous to having kids, I had helped with the business, but then after we started having kids, with each child, kind of had backed out from that more, and then really just had kind of grown to resent a lot of what was going on in the business because I just felt like it was competition for me. <laughs> And for my family, for my kids, I just felt like we had to constantly be competing with his work. We just felt really stuck in all aspects of life. And once he started really plugging in and I started plugging in, the main difference that I saw was just his priorities really started changing. Like I had never really even seen him try to implement time management, really, you know? I mean, it was always just like, this is what I have to do. This is business. This is how we do it here. Our communication skills just started being so much more open between us just from spending that little bit of time together because he hadn't been devoting any specific time to me, literally. I was not on the calendar. I was not, there was no, now I mean we had time together, but it was, I didn't feel honored or prioritized or I didn't feel like anything was, was specifically for me. So that just like totally changed my view of him and just me wanting to support him. Just that one thing was a huge thing for me, just him putting me on his calendar. And it immediately changed the stress level in our home because there wasn't competition. You know, I didn't feel like I was having to compete for his time. Um, Immediately, I just felt like so much more, I just, I had just a whole different level of respect for him. Seriously, like it was like an immediate change. From a business perspective, after plugging into First Steps and Dynasty, we uh, actually cut my hours back. I cut my hours back to no more than 40 hours a week. Cutting my hours back to 40 was kind of stressful, but uh, I cut it back and I found that I actually became more productive. And our business, within a year, we actually raised up three new uh, six-figure income earners uh, within our team, uh, which just feels awesome. Our income has exploded and uh, we have more free time uh, to spend with uh, you know, uh, Heather and the, and the babies and it's just, uh, it's been amazing. Yeah. How much have we paid off? We paid off, off $95,000 debt in 24 months. <laughs> that would be great!
Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success. Register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. It's Amanda Sanders. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I've been completely inspired by this event. And it was payday this week, and instead of me going and splurging and spending money like I typically would have, I paid off $2,700 worth of debt, and I am extremely excited to get the rest of our debt paid off. And I also implemented a plan. We've been living off of a lot of money, and I did the numbers last night, and we can live off of $5,000 a month and like get our debt paid fast. So I'm super excited. Thank you so much. And it's your first event, right? It is my very first event. So awesome. So excited. <laughs> More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider Member today and get on the fast track to success. This is The Danny Johnson Show. We've got Amy from San Diego. Um, Amy, uh, it says that you need healing from MS. Yes. Wow. Okay. I've seen many people be healed of MS, by the way. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, many. They do. I many. Have a hope. <laughs> yes, you do. You do have a hope. Do you trust that he's the healer? I do. You do? All my heart and soul. Yes. So is there anything to worry about? No. No. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. No, have you nothing at all. Have you asked him to heal you already? I have. Have you released I'm believing for it? Yes. Have you released this anxiety of not being healed? Um nope. for the most part. No, 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 no. It's a yes or no. <laughs> the answer is no, which means you're not trusting him fully. Yeah. You're not trusting him fully. So, Father, I pray right now for my Amy here. I pray that uh, she releases. I want you to say, Father, I release. Father, I release. The MS. The MS. And all the pain that goes with it. And all the pain that goes with it. To you. To you. And if this is my life. And if this is my life. Then I will serve you in this life. And I will serve you in this life. And I'm letting go. And I am letting go. Of timelines. Of timelines. And I'm letting go of my will. And I'm letting go of my will. And I receive yours today. And I receive yours today, Lord. And teach me what you want me to know. And teach me what you want me to know. While I walk through this journey. When I walk through this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Amy. Okay. Hey, listen, um, what a day, what a day, what an experience, what a message to truly trust in God means that we are truly releasing the control of the outcome, the timelines and the expectations. And when you know that you really trust him, you walk in peace. And that peace that passes all understanding shocks everybody around you. And you then become a teacher of peace. You become a deliverer of peace to other people because now you're an example of how to walk through hardship, but not losing your peace. That's a message for me right now. So listen, we want to give you a free gift today. Please get over to the website, dannyjohnson.com. This is a free book. It's called First Steps to Wealth. It's the story of how I went from homeless to millions, how God led me out of a path of destruction, a path of crazy debt, a path of swallowing in crazy depression. How he delivered me from all of it is right here in this book. I'd love to give you a free copy of it if you go to dannyjohnson.com. Again, that's dannyjohnson.com. 
First Steps to Wealth, you'll see it right on the website, right on the homepage. You can download your free copy right now. And if you want a physical copy of it, you can call our office, which is 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866-760-8255. You pay the shipping, I'll pay for the $15 book. I think that's a fair deal. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please share this out with everybody else. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.